Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. In some episodes, I'll have guests available to give you even more tips, but in others, the floor is yours. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay. Today, Morgana Ray joins us. Morgana is a 20-time international number one best-selling author and mentor coach. She is regarded to be the world's number one authority on relationship with money. Her groundbreaking approach to love-centered wealth building has featured her on the Wall Street Journal, Yahoo Finance, all the major television networks in the US, Coast to Coast Radio and hundreds more. Morgana's fans call her the money goddess because of the many documented stories of clients manifesting unexpected income of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even over a million dollars within hours of changing their relationship with money. A pioneer in personal development for over 28 years, Morgana writes, speaks and coaches from a desire to empower idealistic entrepreneurs, artists, healers and humanitarians to have a big impact in the world and to heal the rift between heart, spirit and money. On a personal note, Morgana is 26 weddings deep into getting married 100 times in 100 countries to one man. Welcome, Morgana. Thank you for having me. And I just want to make a point because it can all sound really cool and amazing. I'm a late bloomer. I got married for the first time in my life when I was already 47 years old. So that money and love were not areas of life that came automatically to me. But I have developed a theory just through my own life experience and coaching so many thousands of people over the years that if you're putting in all that effort, even if you aren't seeing the results, that effort isn't being wasted. It's just that when you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, whether it's to make money or find your soulmate or heal some persistent illness that doesn't seem to respond to conventional medicine or whatever that stuck thing is, and you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing and your results just don't make sense and don't feel fair. It has been my observation that what's happening is we are actually protecting ourselves from the very thing we're pursuing. So we aren't losers or failures. We're actually very, very successful at unconsciously protecting ourselves from that very thing that we are consciously pursuing so hard. And we're not mistaken, there are real dangers and real wounds. We didn't make it up. And as soon as we make what we want safe, and you may think consciously, well, why wouldn't I want health? Why wouldn't I want love? What's, what's unsafe about that? But if you really dig under the surface and you find out why you're protecting yourself, and then knowing that, then you're able to make what you want safe, what you want can come to you really fast and far bigger and more dramatic than you ever imagined or even hoped for. And that's certainly been the case in my life with money and with my husband. But it hasn't just been me. I mean, the results of my clients have been far more dramatic than anything that I experienced myself. It just goes through repetition and and it's Every healer listening knows like the greatest blessing of what we do 
is we see this transformation and we see people coming back from the brink of the abyss, whatever that looks like for them. And it restores our own faith and our own optimism and our own deep embodied knowing of what's possible, even when things look dire. Thanks for clarifying that. And I talk to my clients a lot about this and and on other podcasts I've spoken about it, that the body wants you to feel safe and that might not look like how you want your health to look, but it will do what it needs to keep you alive. And if that means that you, you know, develop a chronic illness, that may be the pathway to staying alive at that point because safety is paramount. Yeah. Honestly, addictions are coping mechanisms because there is something unbearable. And I'm sure you have it in Australia too. In the United States, we have all those 12 step programs, and they're all designed to create community and a spiritual connection to make sobriety safe. Illnesses, I, I have a client who it's, I'm known for money. That's strangers in airports. All over the planet, I get approached by people who go, oh, are you Morgana? Are you the money honey lady? So I'm really known for money as my primary pain door, why people hire me. But I also have had clients come to me for health issues. I have one who had a money breakthrough with me years back, and then this year came because she had a horrible disease. And that's not what I market or what I promise. It's not my primary focus. However, I have a very long history of people, and it's doing exactly the same work that I do with money, but I, I have a very long history of people recovering from persistent, terrible, sometimes life-threatening diseases. And I did not even know if I could help her, but she was confident. So we did the work. And her disease was so neurological that she was losing her eyesight. She was losing her balance. She had all these quivers. And we did the work. And we, we really uncovered what was behind her health monster and just all the, all the feelings. It can't be an intellectual exercise. That isn't how my kind of change happens. It has to be this like deep, full, emotional, all your neurology lit up, embodied experience, you know, spiritual, emotional, all of it, physical. and created the monster when she made the decision to destroy and obliterate that monster and just get rid of it in her life and change her relationship with her body and with life. The craziest thing happened. Her eyesight improved like dramatically where it was three levels of neurological glasses there. Her eyesight was so much better that her glasses were just drastically overprescribed. And she got her balance back. The second time I saw her, it was like seeing a different woman and the, the, the tremors are going away and she's healing. And that's honestly not something that I could have promised or predicted. I was just I just have so many years of experience seeing things like this happen that I believed it was possible and we gave it our best shot and miraculous things happen. I mean, anybody listening <laughs> to a show about magic knows what I'm talking about. We've all experienced that, right? Definitely. And you know what? You've just answered my first question to you, which was, how do you accelerate health with your expertise? And I really do love that you look at the bigger picture and that connection between the physical and the heart and the spirit. That's just so ideal for people to heal. I believe all do-gooders, whatever we call ourselves, whatever label or modality or profession we have, but especially the healer types, I think we're all kind of taking people to the same core place. It's like, I talk about money as, as my pain door. Money is not and never has been my primary fascination. If it was, I would have gone into a very different career. But it's so useful for opening up the door for the deeper inner work. I think money makes 
us humans more insecure than anything else on earth. And it, it's a perfect mirror of all of our deepest wounds and anxieties around our lovability and our worth as human beings and our safety, our right to exist, and our power. And those are the primary battles of being a human being. But I think whether you're selling weight loss or soulmates or healing from illness or making money or whatever it is, it's a, every pain door is leading into the same room. And that room is your relationship with yourself and existence. And so there's always going to be overlap between all of us. So I may be focusing on money with air quotes, but I'm really always, always, always talking about your relationship with life, and I'm not even being subtle about it. And so it's very useful that my clients make a lot of money after they work with me. It's great for their lives. It's great for my marketing. It's proof of concept. But what I get more excited about, honestly, because I'm just a ridiculous romantic fool, is I get really excited when they fall in love with themselves. I get really excited when their relationships get better and they feel better about life. I get really excited when odd things happen, like infertility ends or this years-long shoulder injury spontaneously goes away or, or my client's eyesight comes back. Because it's all holographic. It's all really the same at the end. Definitely. Now let's talk wealth. What are your top three tips to creating wealth? Not just the financial, but also the personal and emotional wealth. Well, first of all, I'm not a financial planner. So I'm not going to tell anybody how to build a portfolio because I don't know. I hire people for that. My definition of wealth is the quality of love, lifestyle, and legacy in your life. I believe the purpose of money, really the only purpose for money, is to create freedom and support love, lifestyle, and legacy. So my tip is, first of all, with major apologies to all the law of attraction people out there, and by the way, I'm friends with half the people who are in The Secret, which at this point, maybe some of you haven't even heard of, because I guess, I guess that's an old person movie now, but I'm an old person. I would say, at least for what I teach and what worked for me after I failed at everything else, and I live in Los Angeles, which is one of those hotbeds of spirituality. So I was not only taking all the business classes and marketing classes and doing the public speaking and every and this like mountain of celebrity testimonials because I started out coaching in the entertainment industry. But I also had all these spiritual friends who would wave their hands and change my money DNA. And I had my vision board and I had mantras and I had all of it and none of it worked for me. I mean, after doing everything. I was living in Los Angeles, making a hundred dollars a month in one of the most expensive cities in the world. It was insane. I was just living on debt, borrowing from credit cards and family. And it was devastating and uh, despairing and shameful and frightening and outrageous. And I felt hated by the universe. And I really didn't like the universe back and didn't even want to be here, just in a really dark place. So positive thinking, by the way, huge, huge fan. And that will work against you with my approach. I believe that there's actually a use and a value to our worst experiences or they wouldn't happen. They can be a huge source of power and transformation. So we want to use them. If you have victim experiences, I say, Go for it. Claim it. Take off your positive thinking hat temporarily and put on your victim hat and really explore anything in your life that ever made you feel not loved, not safe, not worthy, and powerless. Because those are the four things that money represents. Money represents love and worth 
and safety and power. So anything that has ever made you feel unloved, unworthy, and safe or powerless is going to show up in your relationship with money. We can talk about money beliefs. We can talk about your money story for years, and it'll be very interesting and nothing will change. What we want to do, what I found, what we need to do to get real change, to make things work, is we need to feel and we need to engage and we need to light up all the neurons in your brain so we can rewire you. And we don't do that just by thinking and talking. We do that about really, really feeling and going into those areas of your life that you may have healed a million times. And if you can squeeze any juice out of them, squeeze it because you've already paid the price of admission with your pain. So you might as well milk it forever if you can. And you just find those things that have made the world feel unfair and unsafe and unloving to you, especially the stuff that doesn't look like it has anything to do with money. The accidents, the illnesses, the rejections, the betrayals, anything you've ever felt ashamed of. And that is step number one. That is uncovering the root cause of whatever money drama or trauma you have. It's always going to be rooted in these things that don't look like they have anything to do with money. And you can start with money drama, but go deeper to the stuff about love, worth, safety, and power. That's the first step. I'm saying get really, really honest with what's not working. Don't ignore it. Do not minimize it. Bury that positive thinking hat under 30 feet of concrete. You'll get it right back, I promise you. But there are six steps, and the first one is uncover the root cause. And positive thinking will work against you. It will not allow you to go deep enough to get the change you desire. It's like a slingshot, and the more tension we create, the more power we create to catapult you to where you want to be and have it stick. So no superficial stuff here. We want maximum polarity, and I call the process financial alchemy. Because alchemy is the transmutation of lead in human experience, lead into gold, lead into spiritual and material gold. So that was step number one. And I spend the most time on it because that's where I dig the most. I've had clients where we've made the transformation happen in 15 minutes and the artist had a $100,000 sale within 24 hours. And I've also had the process take eight hours as currently my world record. That was September last year. Eight hours to slay her monster and change her relationship with money. It was hard. And she made $1.2 million out of the next four months. And so she's like, a <laughs> she, she just like carries my flag. So it's whatever it needs to be for you. There's no right or wrong. It's just your process is your process. So step number one is uncover the root cause. And then step number two is where it gets weird and different. And honestly, when I had my own transformation and it sort of happened accidentally back in March of 2002, nobody had ever talked like this before because I looked and I looked and I looked and nobody talked like this before. We make this root cause a person. We give it personhood. So it's no longer just the things that happen to you. And it's no longer an abstract concept. We make it really personal. So for example, I was in a very dark and despairing place. And what happened for me was I had tried everything. And my last Hail Mary, which had been this overcome sales objections class where they give you the magic words to say when a customer says, I can't afford it, or I want to, but I don't have time or whatever. And I, that was, that was going to save me. And this, I'm this great student. I was a National Merit Scholar, even after like a coma and a catastrophic head injury. I just, I'm a good student. So I took the class on overcoming sales objections, seven people in a row. I overcame their objections. They would say they would hire me and seven people in a row didn't show up and didn't pay me a dime. And that was when I lost it. There was really nothing left for me to do. I'd taken all the classes. I'd done all the work. And people wanted to hire me, but they weren't paying. And I just, I, I was working with a coach. I didn't have enough money for rent, but I was working with a coach anyway. And I have to say, thank goodness. Because after this setback, which just plunged me into the darkest pit of despair and hopelessness, because I just, 
I'm a figure outer person and I could not figure it out. And my coach couldn't figure it out. But on this next call, when I'm in this horrible place, my coach asked me this weird question that changed my life. And he said, if your money was a person, who would your money be? And because I was in so much pain, because step number one had already happened without me even being aware of it, when he asked me who my money was, I saw my money monster clear as day. And at that moment in time, my relationship with money looked like a big, scary, dirty, violent biker, bald, with long sideburns, white theater shirt, tattoos. And it didn't matter what he looked like. I could feel that he was all bad and dangerous and hateful and wanted to do me harm. And I could feel my entire body pull back. And I could see myself watching him constantly, vigilantly to create maximum distance between the two of us. And that was my big aha moment. For the first time in my whole life, my relationship with money finally made sense. My financial situation made sense. It didn't matter the Ivy League education or the half dozen coaching certifications or all the celebrity clients and testimonials and the marketing and all, on and on and on. Did not matter what I did. Every cell in my body existed to protect me from this guy because he was bad and he would destroy me. And as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw that that was who money was, I was shocked. I never had an inkling that I felt that way about money. And I also knew that I could not have money in my life if it was that guy. He wasn't going to change. And I had to get rid of him. And that's step number three. So step number one is uncover the root cause and get yourself into a state of, ugh. It's like you're making a case against life. That's step number one. Step number two is give it personhood. And that is your money monster. Meet your money monster. Make him feel real. He has a smell. He has a temperature. He, you can see what he looks like. You can hear what he thinks. And he's all bad. He's not your parents and he's not you because in step number three, you have to get rid of him. And having gone through this process so many thousands of times. The way I teach it and the way I coach it is vastly different than it was 20 years ago. It's way, way, way more nuanced, which is why I have way, way more clients who have made millions of dollars than I did in the beginning. And one of the distinctions I've, I've learned is you need to destroy the monster. Leave no bloody bits, no energetic traces. You must choose yourself. Only one of you gets to survive. Choose yourself, destroy the monster, leave nothing. And for us love and light healer types, that can be a little weird. And so I would just call on archetypes like Durga, the goddess of India, or maybe St. Michael of the West, just some kind of sacred warrior who will slay this monster and be that. Be the sacred warrior. Choose yourself. Reject everything that does no longer have permission to be in your life and destroy it by the most violent, dramatic, permanent means necessary until it's gone. That's step number three. Step number four is now you have a vacuum. You have rejected and destroyed everything that is unfair, everything that is unloving, everything that you do not want to carry forward with you in your life experience. And you will discover all that remains is love. That's all. So in step number four, when I invite you to meet your new relationship with money, who will also be a person and be very personal, this new person will feel like love itself. And it will be a he or a her or a they, the flavor of your choice. Romantic works best because lovers are equals. And to anybody listening who has never had a healthy or a safe loving relationship, I, I see you and I understand. And you are not alone. And this process will redesign your blueprint for relationships and love moving forward. 
And if you're not ready to have a lover money, honey, that's totally cool. You can have a transitional money, honey, and have it work. At a certain point in my experience, my clients come to me and say, I'm ready. I'm ready for a romantic money, honey. And I'm like, great. And here's the thing is your money, honey, will always be safe. Your money, honey, will always love you and love you more than anybody in the world. And you get to set the pace in the relationship. You have the body. You have the power. You are the gatekeeper in this relationship. When you had a relationship with a money monster, it felt like money had all the power. But when you've destroyed the monster and chosen your money, honey, who has shown up spontaneously and loves you and you want to keep, you discover you have all the power. And it's really up to you whether you want to let this person be with you the way he so, and I say he because mine's a he, wants to. And he will be worthy of your deepest admiration and love and trust. Because if not, it's not a honey, it's a monster and blow it up, get ready, get rid of it and just start again. No harm, no foul. I've gone sometimes 10 layers with the client before we found the money, honey, but we do. It's not going to be that difficult for you. I can tell. I'm just letting you know you're on the right track. So you get rid of the monster. The monster is completely gone. And then you have space for love. And this person feels like love and is love. And I call it money only because money is an area of life that needs my love and healing. So this is how I heal my relationship with money. But it's really relationship with life. And now that relationship with life is love. Yay. So that's step number four, a very, very, very long <laughs> introduction to step four. We have two more to go and they're easy peasy and quick. So now that you have your money, honey, you've done all the heavy lifting. Yay. Now you get to have a conversation. So anything you've been worried about, struggling with, you didn't know the answer to, it's been troubling you, all the dramatic circumstances from before, now you get to cuddle like a happily married couple or whatever you want it to be. You just get to cuddle on the couch and take a look at whatever is going on together. And you get to see it through the eyes of your money, honey, who doesn't have any of your insecurities or neuroses and sees how amazing and powerful and divine you really are. And my first question when I met my money, honey, because it was kind of shocking to me, I had... My money, honey, was because I'd gotten rid of the monster, yay, and realized, oh, my God, I have no relationship with money, and I live in Los Angeles. That's not going to fly. So who could I want in my life so much that I'd be willing to have this person in my life, even if it was money? And instantly, I saw this tall, dark, handsome, romantic young man in a tuxedo holding a bouquet of red flowers who was in love with me and wanted to woo me. Wow. Totally shocking and wonderful. He was so loving and sweet. And I had the sense of how I'd been breaking his heart for years and years. And I didn't want to do that anymore. And he wanted to be with me. And I didn't know how. Because I had a lifetime of neurological experience pushing money away without even being aware of it. I didn't know how to let money be with me the, to the degree that he wanted to. So I asked. And that's step number five is have a conversation with your new money, honey. So I asked him, and I'm sharing it so you can steal this for yourself, is I asked him, what do you need from me so you can stay with me? By the way, that's not, what do you need from me so you can love me? Love is unconditional. Presence is conditional. We can love people and not have them in our lives because they are abusing us or they're abusing themselves. And it's the same here. So what, what did my money, honey, need from me so that he could be with me to the extent that he wanted to be with me, which was all the time without limit. So I asked the question, and the great thing about asking a question is you get an answer. And you get an answer from that voice of love who adores you and doesn't carry your hangups and sees you as you really are, which is not how we see ourselves, honestly. So I asked him the question, and he said, I just need you to love me and stop treating me like a monster. And he said that so vulnerably, and it just broke my heart open wide. I didn't want to be hurtful. 
And I agreed. And I started to think about all the ways that I had treated him like a monster without even noticing. And the primary one was when somebody would want to hire me. And I'm sure I'm the only person in the room who has this experience, but I'm like so happy helping and healing. That's like, that's my happy place. But as soon as somebody asked me how much I charged or the euphemism, how do you work, which only took me like 10 years to figure out that that means <laughs> what do you charge? As soon as, as soon as they would ask me that, I would freak out. I would choke. I would get so uncomfortable and ashamed. Like I had this big, stinky, dirty monster that I didn't want anybody to notice. And it was that that was repelling clients and pushing them away from hiring me. And I didn't even know it at the time. But as I'm thinking about how I've been treating money like a monster, that came to mind. So I made a promise to my money, honey, at that moment, that next time he brought me a gift, which usually looked like somebody wanted to hire me, I would, instead of pushing it away like, ew, wrong color, chartreuse, no. <laughs> um, by the way, I love the color chartreuse. But anyway, instead of pushing it away like it was some like ugly Christmas sweater, I would say thank you. And here's the crazy thing. You all know it's coming. Within the next day, four people called me out of the blue and they hired me at double what I'd ever charged before. And I honestly, the first call, I was so uncomfortable because everything in me wanted to talk them out of giving me money. I could feel my throat and my tongue wanting to like make the shapes. But I made this promise. I made this promise to my money, honey, that I would say thank you. And how I did that was when they asked me what I charged, I told them and I shut up. You can imagine how hard that is for me to do. <laughs> but I did. I, I told them the fee. I shut up. I let them think about their finances. And they said, okay. And then they sent me a check. And it was incredibly uncomfortable for me the whole time. But then I got to do it again like an hour later, and it was a little bit less uncomfortable. And then I got to do it again. And I got to do it again. And clients kept coming. And I have honestly made millions of dollars since then. The person who was struggling to make $100 a month. And it's not just making money. I coach people who really know how to make money. I've coached clients on public assistance, but I've also coached billionaires. It's also being able to make the money and have the money in your life without drama, without lawsuits, without being a target, without it getting in the way of love and all that stuff that happens. There's money drama at all ends of the spectrum with money because human beings are human beings and all of our issues around lovable worthiness, safety, and power are going to show up no matter how much you have. Sometimes the stakes just get bigger with more money. So wherever you are on your journey, you want to have a safe and loving relationship with money. You want to stay in constant dialogue because you're going to have this relationship for life. So you want to make it a good one. I mean, I obviously am talking about relationship with life, and I told you that before. What is relationship with life? But our relationship with love and worth and safety and power, our ability to have great relationships, live a good life, and do good things, love, lifestyle, and legacy. But money, in my experience, coaching tens of thousands of people over almost three decades now, Money is the number one excuse human beings give for what we can't have, do, or be. So it's a great spiritual teacher because it gets our attention so quickly. And having lots of money just changes the details, but it doesn't change the experience of being human. So wherever you on your journey, you want to find that monster, slay it, and build a relationship based on love so that you can focus your life on love and lifestyle and doing good deeds because that's what we're here for and that's what makes life worth living in my humble opinion.
Wow. So much information, Morgana. I was just letting you run with that because that's just a bombardment of goodness for the listeners. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Now, our final question for today, and that is around weight. We talk about weight loss. People are on a journey. Maybe they're up and down. Maybe something happens in their childhood that triggers this. So have you ever battled your weight? How did you win that battle? And what can you offer the listeners around weight? Oh, my goodness. That's like a whole other interview. So I was a fat child. My mother was depressed and smoking pot and went into a major baking phase when I was a kid. So every day was like banana chocolate chip bread, avocado bread, and I became a chubby kid. And I was teased by everybody. And my mother literally told me when I was six years old that nobody would love me if I was fat. And that was when she first put me on a diet. And I struggled with eating disorders for years. I hospitalized myself when I was 17. I actually, one of my favorite success stories was coaching a client with an eating disorder who heard me on an interview like this. And we tied her eating disorder to her money monster. And here's why. Eating disorder, anorexia, rejection of ourselves, wanting to be smaller, whether it's bulimia, anorexia, whatever it is, when we look in the mirror and we hate ourselves and we want less of ourselves, that is a rejection of ourselves. That is such a, a just like we find ourselves so not acceptable as we are that we want to be less than. And maybe if we keep taking ourselves away, maybe if there's less of us, we'll finally be acceptable. But it never anybody with an eating disorder knows that there there really is no there there. And that's why it is the deadliest psychological disorder there is. And I know it well from the inside. I know the depth of the grief and the loneliness and the self-hatred and finding yourself not lovable and not acceptable. I know exactly what that feels like. So I put that in with this client's money monster. I didn't tell her I was doing it. I just knew that it's a great thing to use because it's all the same base issues. Am I lovable? Am I good enough? Am I worthy? Am I safe? And am I powerful or powerless? I mean, that's everything that struggling with your weight, especially as a woman, but not even just women, anybody, there's so much rejection around body image. Put that in with the monster and you slay the monster of self-hatred. And here's the cool thing. This client, oh my God, I'm trying to remember her name right now. I'm at an age where names disappear, but it's actually on my website if you look. That eating disorder that she had had for 12 years and the doctors had told her that based on her vital signs, she should be dead. And she had done hypnosis and she had done therapy and she had done everything to get over it. Nothing worked until we slayed her monster. And that was when she got rid of the eating disorder. She slayed the eating disorder and it never came back. And this is back in 2007. So we're talking like 15 years now. That's one of the client stories that I am proudest of because I know that experience from the inside out. And I've I've had other clients with eating disorders, but that was the most dramatic. So whatever it is, it really, at the deepest level, it is an issue of love. And for me personally, that statement that my mother gave me that nobody would love me if I was fat has haunted me my whole life. And my eating disorder and my struggles and my starving and my bulimia and all that wanting to be dead and all that stuff was never about food or weight. It was about just desperately wanting to be loved. About 10 years after I slayed my money monster, I slayed my love monster and just went through all the incidents in my life where love had hurt me. People who had loved me had rejected me, betrayed me. All the instances that made love unsafe. And I got an even bigger monster than I'd ever had with money. And it was clear to me that love wanted to kill me. And I had to kill that love monster. And I met my husband two months later when I was 45. I had never been married in my life. We got married for the first time two years later. 
We've been married 26 times since. His idea entirely. And another interesting th thing about my husband is he's never met a bar of butter or a pound of sugar that he didn't love. And his body and metabolism is very different than mine. I'm five foot two and slightly hypothyroid. So I gained about five pounds a year for five years, which looks like a lot of weight on me. And around that time, my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And I had a real shift in priorities where health became my top priority. I had this sort of wake up call that, oh my God, I get only one body. I get only one body and this is it. And I want to hedge my bets. So I went on a weight loss plan for the very first time in my life that was not rooted in any ounce of self-hatred. It was not that I didn't think I was beautiful. I just, I found a way to actually find myself gorgeous at my highest weight. And I had a husband who treated me like I was gorgeous. It never, ever bothered him. So the love issue was no longer in play. I was lovable any weight that I was. So there was no pressure there. But I decided I want to be healthy and I want to live a really long time. So I lost the weight and it was such a different experience because there was no feeling of self-punishment. And, you know, lose weight, don't lose weight. I really don't care. I think the real question is, do you enjoy your experience of life and do you love you? And everything else is sort of garnish, if that makes sense to you. Totally. And I think that is a great sentiment to wrap this interview up with. Morgana, where can people find you? And do you have a freebie where they can find you? Because we love giving freebies to the listeners. Oh, of course. I am freebie central. Okay. So because I believe, I don't hold back my secrets. I try to give everything away any chance I can because I believe transformation should be available wherever you are on the journey. And the people who dig me hire me anyway. So I don't have to be secretive or hold anything back. So yeah, I have more, I have more goodies. The place to find me really, really easy, MorganaRay.com. Just type in my first and last name as spelled out on this episode and throw a dot com. And that'll go to my website, which is the mothership, which has everything and actually has a lot of free fees. It has a video series. It has my money love quiz. It has hundreds of videos and blog posts to answer questions. I recommend that the best place for you to start is with my money love quiz. If you scroll down, like, oh, totally get the video series. It'll, it'll actually answer some questions that I didn't hear. And this will answer some questions that I don't there. It all evens out in the end. But if you go to the money love quiz, that will give you sort of a picture of, because it's, not a, it's not a judgy, it's not a mean, it's not that kind of a quiz. It's just like, this is where you find it. Oh, wow, I'm really strong here. And this is where I need to grow. And based on how you respond, and you'll see that my, when I talk about money, I'm talking about all areas of life. Uh, based on how you respond, I will make recommendations for what your next step should be. And I always include some free stuff there too. M is in Mary, O R G is in George, A N is in Nancy, A R A E dot com. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us. I've really loved listening to you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And listeners, thank you so much for your time. Please like, share, review this podcast. We appreciate you. For now, go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at A Magical Life Podcast or at Holistic Natural Health Australia. That's holistic with a W. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more.